Okay, so here are all the 3D printed parts. Of course, you have the A10 Warthog as well as the weapons kit that you can also get. I'm very happy with this, guys. I already went ahead and painted it, so I'll show you what it looks like before whenever I was printing it, but I wanted to go ahead and paint it just to make it a little more realistic. But here is a GBU. I think it's a GBU 24 laser guided bomb. Super happy with this, guys. The quality looks really good, especially for first time ever 3D printing something with filament. All right, so we're gonna start with the fuselage first. And the maker of this 3D print file actually had everything connected together when you printed it. So nothing's been assembled on this section yet. It came like this off the print. Of course, I did paint it and I'll show you that a little later. But the maker's Fab365. I'll put a link in the video description below if you do wanna purchase this. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this little tab out right here. And then that's gonna line up with this part right there. And then we're actually gonna flip it over because he has a video on how to do this. And we're gonna go ahead and these pieces move right here, which is really smart. I mean, really good engineering in my opinion. And then that tab is gonna line up with that right there. But you need to make sure this fits in this slot right there. That's pretty important. So make sure that stays there as you line everything up. And you're just gonna pop it together like that. So I went together really easy. Next, you're just gonna push this in like that. Fits really well. And then for the front, the cockpit, we're actually gonna line it up like this. And then there's little tabs right here on either side as well with this slot and they're gonna line up together and you're gonna pop it in. Like that. So I did paint everything, like I said. So some of these fits might be a little tight just because it has a little extra paint on it. And one thing I did, you'll notice here, is I actually broke this off. I was trying to fit it to the wing as a test fit when I first got it, but I don't think you're supposed to take these apart afterwards. So not a fault of the print, the printer. It was just me, user error. I just wanted to see what it was like and I didn't want to have to print it again. So it'll still work. I'll add some glue and we'll be fine on that. But here's what the fuselage looks like in the front. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the air brakes or the speed brakes. And you have these two pieces here. You have a cutout there. And then on the back, you have this little bump. You're gonna line up the cutout with that bump on the other one. And then these two pieces are gonna line up next to each other. We have a bump on either side. And then we're gonna take this piece here and you're gonna slide them in. And you can see they're gonna fit in those little holes right there. Okay, so now you're just gonna line these tabs up with those holes right there. And you're gonna push them in, but be careful because they are pretty fragile. And you may have to shave down this part here or down here to get them to fit. Just like that. So it looks pretty good. And these air brakes do open up, of course, and they do close, but don't paint like I did beforehand just because it makes it a little tight of a fit and I wouldn't recommend that. But overall, looks pretty good. So here are the two wings assembled and I'm very happy with the way they turned out. So for the tail assembly, we're actually gonna use a little bit of glue. We're gonna take the elevators, line them up with that right there, push it in, but we're gonna add a little glue to make sure it stays there. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this one right there. It fits okay without glue, but they said to add glue, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And for the rudders, I'm actually gonna add a little bit of glue in here as well, just because it'll fit, like I'll show you here. It slides into that hole, but it's just not tight enough of a fit where it'll come off. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of glue to that and do the same thing for the other side. All right, and there's the tail assembly. The rudders actually do move as well on both sides, which I thought was pretty cool. Same thing with the ailerons, they do move up and down. And we're not done with this assembly, but it looks pretty good. And then the maker did make this little Fab 365 mark on the bottom. You could always just sand that down if you wanted to, but I don't mind it. All right, now we're gonna get to one of my favorite prints from this plane, and that's the engine assembly. This printed really good, guys. The only thing that doesn't look that great is my paint job, and that's because I'm not a painter. I don't even have an airbrush, so this is all hand-painted, and I kinda, it didn't make it look as good as it could have. I didn't even have the right paint, so I am happy with the color, but of course, the real Warthog would be a little lighter. And then of course the jet engines themselves look really good. I mean, I added some weathering and then a little metal paint on the inside of the blades there, which I thought looked pretty good. Might have gone overboard <laughs> with, the, with the weathering and the metal, but it's all good. It still looks really good. I wanna show you all some of the up close details that the model maker did. And you'll see a P on this side. And then on the other side, you'll see an S 
and that's for port and starboard, of course. Starboard's gonna go on the right, port's gonna go on the left. Okay, so the way we're gonna assemble this is we're gonna flip it over and you'll see that little indention right there. That's where this part's gonna actually slide into. And so when you're putting it in, you're gonna have to wiggle it a little bit to get it to fit. And it'll go in like this. Just try to line up those two pieces together like I said. And then this part of the engine, when you push it in, you'll see this cutout. It's gonna fit right there and then this, these two little lips are gonna line up with that slot there and you should just push it in like that. That looks really good. I mean, I might do a little touch up paint, of course, after this. And then for the top part, push it over, make sure it's even, a little bit of a tighter fit. There you go. And the same thing for the starboard side. And when you're pushing it in, you want to make sure this piece is in front of that tab right there. It's kind of hard, but you got to got to wiggle it a little bit because you don't want it. There we go. You don't want that behind it because then this part won't line up. And then of course, once you get that together and then we'll do the top, of course, try to get as level as you can and then just pop it on like that. Very, very happy with this. I mean, I thought again, this is my favorite part of the plane so far with the print. All right, so for the doors, you have these hinges right here that are gonna line up with these spots, but you're gonna wanna twist. It's kind of a hard fit for this front one here. So you kinda gotta slide it in behind there. So the door's a little tricky, especially get this front hinge on right there. You have to kinda wiggle it in place and then the back hinge should just be able to pop in as well. There we go. So that is in like that and then you can close it and lock it. And then the same thing with the other side. Once you get it in place, you'll just kind of push it down and it'll slide forward. Like that actually goes up and forward and then you can lock it in place like that. All right, so moving on to the wheels now. You have two positions for the gear, the gear up and the gear down. We're gonna start with the gear down and I'm not really happy with my paint job, of course, but the gear itself looks really good. And so what we're gonna do is we have tires and rims. And so these tires are gonna line up with the slots right here and we're gonna glue it in like that. And then we're gonna take the rim and put it on top. So I'm at a little bit of glue right here. Just kind of go around it a little bit. And then I'm gonna take the tire, has a little cutout in the top. You're just gonna push it into that slot. Then you're gonna take the rim, which is really good detail for the size. Again, if you mess with the settings on the printer, it'll be even better. So, and you're just gonna pop it in place. Make sure it's even in the back. And there you go. This is the front gear, by the way. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the rear gear. Add a little bit of glue there. And I'm actually gonna put the rims in first this time. And you can see the rims look really good. I added a little bit of metal paint. Not sure if I like that or not, but is what it is. Still looks good. These tires printed really well, by the way. I painted them black and they really do look like rubber. And here are all three of the gears completed. So for the gear in the down position, you have this piece here and you have this like half tire and you're gonna line it up. There's a little slot or cutout in the tire right there. And you're just gonna push it in like this. Of course, I'll touch up that piece right there. And then you're just gonna get one of these half rims. You're gonna push it in as well. And of course, you're gonna wanna glue that. And that's what it looks like when it's glued on. We'll do the same thing for the other one. So to install the engines, we're gonna take the fuselage and you'll see here, you have like little hooks on that side, just gonna line up with that hole right there. And then this little indent right here is gonna line up with that. And all we're gonna do is push it together and it should go in pretty easy. So let's see. Yeah, there we go. For the tail section, we're gonna flip it over and you'll see on the top, you have this little hook that's gonna lock into place that little bar right there. And we're gonna do it at an angle, so we're gonna kinda push it forward like that. So line it up a little bit. Now on the back, it's cause I painted it, which again, probably shouldn't have. Um, I may need to sand that part off cause it's a really tight fit. I'm gonna see if I can do it, but if not, I'm gonna have to sand it. Okay, so I did end up sanding this little part right here on the other side like that, made a little bit of a curve so it could get around that lip. And I also sanded the inside of this right here as well. But it looks awesome, guys. This is gonna be a little more flush once we're done. And I'm probably fill this in with a little bit of a gap filler as well and repaint so it looks completely flush. But 
really solid model as well. I know y'all can't hear it, but here. I mean, this is not cheap. It doesn't feel thin. doesn't feel like it's going to break easy. That was my fault. Some of the thinner pieces definitely be more careful with, but overall, this is a really good model so far. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and do the wings. And one thing I'm going to do is I am going to add a little bit of glue just right along here because when I pop it in, I want to make sure it's flush along the seam. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to pop this one on. All right, so you can see a little bit of the glue right there. And now we're just going to wiggle it in place. And there we go. That is actually a really good fit. And I'm going to clean off some of this glue. And then I'll have to, of course, touch that up because it's going to be white. And the same thing for the other side that I broke. Definitely adding glue to this side. There we go. Still fits really good, even though I broke that piece off. I like it a lot. It's starting to look like a warthog now. All right, so now for the gear section, the undercarriage section, we are going to have to glue this piece as well, like that. So I'm going to do that real quick. To install this gear assembly, you're going to line it up. You have a little tab sticking out there, which this slot's going to go into. And then this is going to go into that. So first, line it up like this. And then just push it in. And I'll just push back like that. And there we go. We'll do the same thing with the other side. Now we're going to get to the canopy assembly and I want to show you how it's supposed to look and then what I did to make it look a little better. So here's the rear canopy and it didn't come with this little glass on top of it. It actually came with a printout like this that fits on top of that and you can paint it. Or if you have a clear uh, PLA or plastic, you can print with that. But I only had white and white did not look good and neither did this one. This looked better. This is the original color of the plastic, by the way, before I painted it. This looked better than the white, but I still wasn't happy with that, especially because for the front part of the canopy, I added some of this micro crystal clear, which is basically like model glass. It, it's almost like Elmer's glue. When you put it on, you get a toothpick and you kind of rub it on and it'll all connect together. And I did that to make a glass canopy here. And the reason why is these are the pieces that came with it for the front. So you were supposed to paint these as well if you wanted to, but they would fit like, for example, in this slot behind here, and it would just be a solid piece on here and here. And then for the rear canopy, what I did was I cut out a piece of, I think it was like a McDonald's cup or something. And then I just used a little bit of glue to hold it in around the actual canopy frame. And I'm very happy with that, especially when you put these two pieces together. It's I think gonna look really good because I painted the cockpit. So now I'm gonna show you an up close view of the cockpit. And this is actually what impressed me the most out of this model, guys, because I wasn't expecting a cockpit really at all, to be honest with you, especially because they have the covers for the canopy. But the amount of details that went into this and the way that this 3D printer printed this, I was so impressed with. And my paint job is not that great, so guys, please just bear with me. I added a little bit of black here and some metal looking like it was a little weathered. But the seat itself, you can see the detail in the seat. I painted it green. I painted the ejection seat handles um, yellow. And then, of course, on the side, I think that's an oxygen tank. But you can even see that detail there. I painted that green. And then the rudder pedals are there as well. It's kind of hard to see it with my lighting, but they're there. There's also two MFDs, one there and there. And there's no joystick or throttle. But again, I, I mean, I'm just blown away by the quality of this printer and this model itself. So really, really impressed. And now we're going to go ahead and install the canopy. Okay, so on the underside of the front canopy, you'll have these little notches that are going to line up with those slots there. There we go. All right, that actually went in a lot better than I thought. So you can lay the canopy flat, and it also can lift up if you want to show the canopy open. And for the rear canopy, it's the same thing. You're just going to line those two notches up with those slots there. You pop it in like that, and it does stay raised as well if you want to. So you can have the front and the rear canopy open. So now I'm going to show you what it looks like with the gear in the down position. You're just going to line these pieces up and push it all the way down. Now I'm not going to go all the way flush right now just because I want to be able to take it out. I want to show you guys what it looks like with the gear in the up position as well. For the rear gear, the tire is going to go to the outside and it has these little cutouts there and there that are going to line up with those notches. And it actually is a really good fit. If I hadn't painted it, it would have been even better. And then of course, you'll push it all the way flush. Same thing with the other side. Make sure the tires facing the outside and you'll push it flush as well and it looks really good the only thing about it is it's rear heavy so for example i'll show you right now 
it wants to tilt back. So they created this little stand that you'll go ahead and pop in this slot right here. That way when you set it down, it won't tilt back. All right, so to install the gear in the up position, you're gonna take this little door here and push it in. And of course, once you push it in, it's probably not gonna come back out just because it's such a tight fit. And you know, there's not a slot to be able to pop it out like in Hobby Master models. So I'm not gonna push it all the way down because I'll probably put the gear in the down position. And then for the rear gear, you'll put the tire to the outside and it'll go in this section here and you'll do the same thing. You'll just push it down. So there's what it looks like with the gear in the up position if you wanted to do it in flight. I don't know how you would put it in flight though because there's not a stand, but that looks really good. Honestly, I may try to build a stand because I really like the way that looks, especially once I get the weapons on it, it'll look even better. All right, so the last thing we need to install for the aircraft itself is the Pave Penny Laser Spot Tracker. And this is actually used to spot a laser designated target on the ground. And so what you would do is you see this little cutout here, you're gonna line it up with that notch and we're actually gonna glue it like that. And there it is installed. All right, so now we're gonna get into the weapons. I'll go ahead and show you what the weapons look like. This is the GBU, I believe it's GBU 24, and it looks really good. I painted it green, it's supposed to be more orange right here, but it's the only color I had, so I'm pretty happy with it. The top part, I actually did cut off, and the reason why is I used this micro crystal clear again, and I made like a little ball at the top, because it's supposed to be the seeker head for the laser. And so basically the Warthog or any other aircraft could designate a laser target on the ground. And then when they dropped this GBU laser got a bomb, this seeker head would find the laser and then these fins would adjust to keep the laser or the bomb on target. So really, really good detail, super happy. I printed two of these. You can print more if you want. You can print as many as you want or what, but I'm going with two of these. Next up, we have CBU 97s, I believe. These are cluster bomb ammunitions. Basically, they would explode at a certain altitude or time, and then little cluster bombs would come out and just go all over the place. They were huge and devastating for targets on the ground. So, But I printed two of these, and it looks like online they were mostly white with maybe like a little yellow stripe right here. So the paint that I had was not the best, plus the original uh, model was gray, you know, like this color of the canopy right here. And it didn't do so well with the paint I had, but still looks pretty good. So the model itself is really nice. That's what's important here. So and then I have some uh, dumb bombs. I think these are Mark 82s, but they also printed really well. Um, I printed, I think, a six of them. Um, so we'll put those on a station as well. And then I also have some Mavericks. And I really like the Mavericks. They're actually my favorite weapon uh, that the Warthog will carry or in general for air to ground because they're really fun. They made IR version and also laser guided Mavericks, but since I don't have a targeting pod, I'm just gonna assume that these are IR guided. And right here is a seeker head, or that's where the seeker head would be as well, just like the GBU guided bombs. So you'd lock onto a target, release these, and the seeker head would follow it down to the target. Now I cut off the top here and did the same thing. So normally if you print this model, here I'll show you real quick. This is what it would look like. I printed it in white so you could see, but again, I just chopped the top off there and did a little micro crystal clear to make it look like a secret head. So anyways, the model printed really good though. So happy with that one. And then lastly, we have the AM9 Sidewinders. These did not print very well for me, or at least the top part didn't. Um, it took a couple of failed prints to get it, but I don't blame the printer at all. I think it was just, it's so skinny and narrow. And then at the top, it just, it's very hard to print this kind of part. Uh, on the ledge. So I know there's ways to get around it with printer settings, but either way, still glad I have them. The models themselves look good. It just didn't print as well on my printer yet just because of my settings. So we also have the hard points. Now there's a lot of different hard points. For example, we have the six position hard point here, which we're going to use for the bombs, the dumb bombs, and that's going to go under the center of the fuselage. Then we have a three position for, I think you're supposed to mount three Mavericks to here. I'm only gonna do two on each station though instead, just because I like that better. And then we have just different sizes and links. And basically these hard points are gonna be determined, or where they go is gonna be determined by the hole size on the bottom here. Like for example, this one, it has a, a specific little notch in the back. I'm not sure what that is. If you know, put a message in the comments. But this one, the way these are spaced, it only fits right here on the outside of the wing. It won't fit here because it's not spaced far enough apart. 
and it will fit here. So you have two of these, one for each side. And first off, I'm gonna actually show you the ECM pod. So this is an electric countermeasure pod. Basically, it's a, a jammer. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take the hard point, and you see these spots right here, and you're gonna line it up with the bottom right here, and then you'll just push it in place. And actually, it's gonna go the other way around. So we're gonna line it up like that, and you can glue it in place. I might end up doing that, but, and then you would just flip it around and push that in. I'll probably end up gluing the hard points as well because it's not gonna stay unless I glue them in, but that's what it's gonna look like. And then for the Mavericks, you have this triple rack here, and then you're gonna have this really skinny, narrow one with only one attachment slot here, which is gonna line up right there, and you'll push that in. I'm gonna glue it, of course, because it probably won't stay very well. Then the Maverick has two hard point connectors here, and you're gonna attach those to that. And I'm gonna do one on either side. And then for the sidewinders, you're gonna take this hard point here and the same one that you did for the ECM pod that has this little notch right there. And you're gonna connect these two together like this. And I'll probably put some glue in there as well. And then you'll just take the sidewinders and they'll fit in those slots on either side. And I'll put some glue and put these in. All right, so I have all the weapons and ordnance mounted on their hard points. Right here I have six Mark 82 dumb bombs. I've got two GBU, I believe 24s. The two CBU 97 cluster bombs. And two Mavericks on each station. So there's four total. And then of course the two Sidewinders, which will go on the outer wing on this side over here. All right, so we are done. I have the loadout installed and I am very happy with it. I did uh, the ECM pod on the outside. Then I did the Mavericks, I did the GBUs, the Mark 82s, and then on the outside over here, I did the Sidewinders. And I am very happy with the way it looks. I'll just kind of show you all from far. It's kind of hard to hold it, but that looks really good. And then, so as far as the CBU 97s go, what I figured is I could take any, if I wanted to, I could take off the Mark 82s and see these slots right here. That's where these would go. I could actually install one there and one there. So I'd have two CBU 97s, which would be crazy destructive. And I may do that. Um, it's just kind of hard because these Mark 82s wanna fall off every time I move them, like that one right there. But I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like because I also really like this loadout. And I ended up gluing these hard points on because I know those are gonna be permanent. Permanent, the only place that I may change is this right here. So here is what it looks like with the CBU 97s installed, which that looks really good too. Um, I mean, that would be a really killer loadout. The only thing missing is a targeting pod. I wish there was like a lightning pod or something that you can install, but it's all good. We're just gonna pretend that these GBUs are being uh, designated by another aircraft. And for those of you that were wondering, here's what it looks like with the speed brakes extended. Looks pretty cool. And if you wanted to open up the engine doors, pretty cool way to display it. And for those of you wondering what 3D printer I used, I used the Creality Ender 5S1, and I wanna thank Creality for sending me this review for you guys. I've never used a PLA printer before. I've used some resin printers, I have a couple of them. They're great, they're awesome, but the time it takes to set up, the time it takes to clean it, do all that kind of stuff, I just don't like it, and I don't use them that often. And this one was really easy to use, really easy to set up, honestly, barely even tweaked any settings, and I think the model turned out great. They also sent me the Creality Sonic Pad. This just basically goes in hand with the actual Ender 5S1. Makes your prints a little faster, easier to use, and also a little higher quality. You don't need it. You can use the built-in screen here and it works just fine. But if you wanna increase your print times, quality, user interface, be able to print wirelessly, all that kind of stuff, I highly recommend the Sonic Pad. And if you guys have any tips, for 3D printing with PLA printers, please send them my way, leave a message in the comments because I'm looking for a way to print these models better, a little higher quality, and I know this machine's capable of it. If you wanna purchase it, I'll put a link in the video description below as well. So let me know what you guys think. All right, and I almost forgot one of the most important weapons of the Warthog, the nose cannon. This thing was pretty much built around this cannon, so it's pretty important. <laughs> they did a pretty good job of the details as well. I added a little bit of metal on the end of the tips just to make it stand out a little better and then added some black wash right around here. 
and very happy with it overall. So thanks guys for watching. If you wouldn't mind, please go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps out and I have a lot of other videos coming soon. Thanks again to Creality for sending me this 3D printer to review for you guys so I could print this model. And if you wanna purchase that, I'll put the link in the video description below as well. So thanks for watching guys.